lazy SVD, even faster SVD decomposition, yet without agonizing pain. Everyone knows SVD decomposition. We love it, we use it a lot in practice, and it includes PCA as a special case. Getting the full decomposition takes a lot of time, and therefore in practice, we actually only care about getting the top k singular vectors and singular values. Because maybe the remaining are just white noise or something, I don't care. This is the problem known as KSVD. In recent years, there have been some important discoveries made towards KSVD. The Musco brothers obtained the first running time that is gap free, meaning it doesn't depend on the Aiken gap between the k's and the k plus first singular values. They use block Krylov method in particular. And Shamir obtained the first variance reduced stochastic running time. Later, Gabriel et al. improved Shamir uh, to make it also gap free, but only for one SVD. And in addition, uh, Bojanapali, Jane, and Shangavi, they give a KSVD algorithm with a running time that's only linearly in the number of non zeros of the input matrix. And then plus some like one over epsilon square error term. So for those of you who maybe have seen those papers, you may immediately realize that the math there is are very involved. They use even different methods, Lenzos or Block Krylov or shift and inverse alternative minimization. But is it really necessary? Our paper answers this question by saying no, it's not necessary at all. So we provide a new simple and unified framework, lazy SVD, that essentially outperforms or at least equal perform everything on this table. For the first one, we get even faster running time. For the second one, we get not only a stochastic method, but also accelerated and gap free. For the third one, well, our method works for KSVD, not just one. And for the fourth one, we also obtain this type of running time, but without using the complicated alternative minimization framework that BJS has proposed. Here is our simple intuition behind the new framework. In history, one SVD is much better understood than KSVD. For instance, Lanzo's method has been known for at least 20 years to be accelerated and also get free, but nothing is known for the rank K version until last year. And one SVD can be solved stochastically using shift and inverse, but this is, doesn't work for rank K. So then we ask the following fundamental question in our paper, that is, why don't we solve KSVD just one by one? In particular, why don't we run one SVD, obtain the top singular vector, and then run it again, but restricted to the orthogonal space of V1, obtain a second vector, then run it again, and this time restricted to the orthogonal space of V1 and V2, and so on and so forth for K iterations. The issue with this approach is that we cannot compute singular vectors exactly. For instance, if say the top three singular vectors, singular values are very close to each other, then unless you have a really exact algorithm, you can't really distinguish the first three singular vectors and therefore maybe what you output as the one SVD algorithm is only something that lies in the span of the top three singular vectors. In such a case, if we restrict to this vector v that has arrow in it, then can we make sure that the arrow doesn't blow up? Yes, we can. That's the main contribution of our paper. It says that just the following simple algorithm works. You don't need to design a different KSVD algorithm. Just choose your favorite one SVD algorithm Okay, choose your favorite one. Every time you run this method on the original matrix but projected to the orthogonal space of all the vectors you have already obtained. You obtain a vector, new vector V, you append it to this matrix V. And that's it, it just works. Only two final remarks. Remark one, what do I mean by it works? So 
don't worry, like, you can go to our paper to see the details, but whatever people have guaranteed in the past, like spectral norm, forbidden norm, correlation guarantee, really quotient guarantee, we also have that. So it's the maximum possible word of it works. So it just works, don't worry. The second thing is that, do I have any restriction on this one SVD algorithm? The answer is essentially no, but you had better satisfy the following property. Let sigmas be the singular values and w's be the singular vectors. Then we say, and one SVD algorithm A is a row epsilon approximation if it satisfies the following thing pictorially. Define a threshold 1 minus rho times the top singular value, and then call all the singular vectors to the right of this threshold to be small singular vectors. Then the algorithm is a row epsilon approximation if the output vector correlates with all small singular vectors by at most epsilon. Okay? In such a case, we say the algorithm is rho epsilon approximate 1 SVD. Now, our main theorem in the paper essentially says the following. As long as this algorithm A runs in a time that is only polylogarithmic with respect to 1 over epsilon, then error doesn't blow up. For instance, power method, Lanzos method, shift and inverse, essentially everything you may come up in your mind at this point does fall into this category. For instance, Lanzos method has the following running time that indeed has a log dependence on 1 over epsilon. Finally, if we choose shift and inverse to be our 1 SVD algorithm A, then we beat the first three results in this table. And if we choose it to be shifting inverse plus a little bit uh, uh, sampling, then we got the same result as the last one, but without using alternative minimization. Finally, let me ask, what if my favorite algorithm A runs only in a time that's polynomial with respect to whatever epsilon, but not polylogarithmic? This, by the way, is indeed the case in the streaming setting because if you don't have the data matrix, offline, you only have it coming one by one in a streaming setting, then you cannot hope to get a very accurate log one over epsilon dependence. You have to pay polylog. In such a case, you can still apply lazy SVD, but arrows will blow up, meaning that you don't really get a very, very fast algorithm. So one needs some additional work, actually with agonizing pain in this case, to really get the most optimal algorithm if you only have an algorithm that runs in poly 1 over epsilon convergence. So this is the paper that we just put online that obtained the first efficient convergence rate for streaming KPCA, and our convergence rate is global, gap-free, and near optimal. You're welcome to take a look at it. That concludes my talk of today. Thank you.